ομιλητέ. Οι ομιλίε του θα γίνονται στα αγγλικά. Αν κάποιο θέλει, μπορούμε, είμαστε δύο άτομα που μπορούμε να κάνουμε κάποια μετάφραση. Ο ένα είναι ο Χαν Σάμπιν. Ο Χαν Σάμπιν είναι ένα virtual artist based in Amsterdam. He is also a Meritus Professor in Art Economics and Art Sociology at the University of Amsterdam. He wrote the book Why Are Artists Poor, which is now, which is now in its fourth print and has been translated in five languages. Since Occupy Wall Street and the increased unhappiness of artists with their socioeconomic position, the book draws renewed attention. Presently, he's working on a new book, The Art Period, in which he also pays attention to cultural entrepreneurship. Hans. Okay. Um, they've asked me to uh, talk about the uh, position of non-profits and for-profits in the private sector. Okay. Maybe it's better if I... Up to you. Maybe it's safe. Let's try it. So, um, I've been asked, well, this is too much, huh? It's okay? Okay. Um, I've been asked to uh, discuss the position of non-profits and for-profits in the cultural sector. And, and I'm quite sure that you're all involved in the cultural sector. Probably some are um, entrepreneurs uh, in the for-profit uh, organizations. Some are employees, some are trainees, volunteers, which is also very common construction both in the for-profit and non-profit. Um, so what we should actually do is have half of you sit on that side and you're the for-profits and then the good ones are here and they're the non-profits. <laughs> uh, because that's the way, a little bit the way it still is. Eh? For-profit is bad and non-profit uh, non is good. And that can be frustrating um, also in the interrelations because everybody now has to do with uh, whether you work in a for-profit profit or non-profit, you have to do with the other side as well. One way or another, you're always confronted with one another. And for instance, if you have a, uh, uh, yeah, an, an, uh, an little enterprise which is uh, for profit but very much into creative things, you may want to employ artists, and then artists are the non-profits by accident, and they, they hate the very idea of commerce. Uh, well, of course, they're commercial, but actually they are for profits if they are independent, if they are little entrepreneurs, but okay, they will deny it. And so, just so they can hear the Yeah, it's just sounds very loud. I know, but I'm hearing that. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, yeah, you, you may get into troubles in understanding one another if you get to involve artists in your own uh, little uh, enterprise, which is pro profit, because you speak different languages. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, I think. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, so, how do, we, uh, how do we understand these differences? Little differences in mentality, little differences in rhetorics, which should be overcome to get. Uh, to a more uh, exciting situation and where you can benefit from one another. I think it's good to understand where it all started. The non-profit is actually, I would say, mainly an American in, uh, invention from the late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, there we had, yeah, capitalism really uh, starting off. Uh, also, um, yeah, in the provision of cultural goods, it were uh, for profits. Uh, there were cultural entrepreneurs who offered uh, music, classical music, uh, and what was most profitable was to combine it with light music. So there was light music, classical music, all in the same program. In the museums, were, those were exhibitions, there were uh, bearded women together with beautiful paintings. It was all a nice, uh, and people liked it. There was You have to find the right balance. <laughs> Sorry? You, you, you have to sit somewhere in between. Yeah. Does it work? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe it's safe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, um, so uh, the elite who was at that time sort of uh, annexing the high culture and to get it established and tell people, oh, this is for us and that is for you. For you is entertainment, for us is yeah, 
actually European culture, European music, European paintings, they had to get these separate uh, and cultural entrepreneurs, uh, for, for profit cultural entrepreneurs were not interested in that. There was less money in it. There was actually not enough money in uh, bringing just classical music or just... Uh, uh, so the only solution they had was first to persuade the uh, for-profit entrepreneurs to uh, bring only classical music by uh, offering them subscriptions and all that sort of thing, but it didn't work. So in the end, they had to organize their own uh, provision, and that was the uh, beginning of the uh, of the non-profit uh, organizations in the United States. And that history comes back to us in some ways. Um, so it was a mixture of art and entertainment. Uh, there was not, not enough distinction for the bourgeois, and then it ended up with the non-profits. And of course, that's also a legal form, very simple. If you want supporters, if you want donors, uh, if you want the government to support you, you uh, yeah, the supporters must be sure that it doesn't have, end up in the pockets of the owners or the shareholders, etc. So it's also just a very simple difference, but it's, it has many uh, consequences. And I would say it still is there in the sense that uh, the non-profit, yeah, that in the rhetorics and everything, there is something of seriousness. It's serious. It's pure. Right? Again, not mixed, not this and this and this. It's uh, pure. There's the importance of autonomy, self-determination. Yeah? Uh, you don't let yourself be guided by the wishes of consumers. No, uh, you, you yourself have to be an autonomous, you have to make. And then the idea is that only then you can be truly creative. So the others, the for-profits, they can't really be creative. Huh? Maybe they're very creative, but uh, you don't feel that they are the true creators. The true creators must be non-profits. Uh, and then there's, of course, this yeah, idea of sacrifice. You are willing to make sacrifices to produce within the non-profits. And that goes on to the present day. Huh? Volunteers will sooner work for nothing in a non-profit than in a for-profit and also the other way, the for-profit entrepreneur will yeah, find it more normal to say, ah yeah, I, I at least pay a little, yeah? and in a non-profit it's all accepted, that you don't get any money or pay anything. Um, okay, so there is even something of an aristocracy in the non-profit sphere, the, remain, the last remainder of some sort of aristocratic uh, attitudes. Um, at the same time, it's less dis disciplined, less short-term goal-oriented, less instrumental, and so sometimes in the, no uh, the non-profits, the atmosphere can be a bit more relaxed. And also, yeah, we're all friends, this kind of mentality, but it's dangerous, right? it's all, we're all friends, because also the next step is, oh, well, we do it all for nothing. Uh, and in a way, that can be very unprofessional and not even very productive. Okay, so in the, I would say in the for-profits there is more, well, what I would say, professionalism. Uh, it's easier to cooperate with one another because you don't have to be all authentic, all put your signature on the, the project, yeah, like artists want to. Yeah? If you're authentic, you want to be able to say, oh, I made this, this is mine. Well, in a uh, for-profit, well, the signature can't be so important, so you can work together in a team, you can cooperate easier, and it's not all about egos. Um, and then there is, uh, uh, yeah, if you, you're saying we are professionals and we are not sacrificing ourselves all the time, then we also expect proper remuneration, uh, and proper income, uh, otherwise you stop. And that's, again, a, a, a major difference, at least in the arts, uh, that in the for-profits, uh, people, if income gets below a certain level, it can be lower than elsewhere, because it's still a bit attractive to be in the cultural sector, but they're not going on forever and ever for no income. Well, in the, uh, certainly artists they go on for their lifetime, eh? or they not see very little, or get some second jobs. And this attitude can also exist a little bit in the non-profits. Um, okay. I don't know how much time I have. Two more minutes. Okay. Well, the other thing I was going to say was that um, the non-profits, this whole 
uh, attitude can lead to exploitation of your own people, of their own personnel. Uh, uh, you're expecting them to do it for nothing because it's all for the good, for the good, for the for art, for whatever. And that's tricky. Then it gets into real exploitation. So I think non-profits and for-profits can learn a lot from one another. And maybe in the present state, uh, it's not possible that non-profits have more to learn from the uh, for-profits than the other way. Let's stick to that. Thank you.